Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the dreaded variables. Now variables actually aren't as bad as people think they are when they first start programming. A variable is really just a way to hold information in a way that's a little easier to memorize. The tricky part comes when you start talking about different data types. Now, data types is something we're also going to talk about in this lesson, but for the time being, let's just stick with a regular variable, right? So a variable looks a lot like this. You declare it with var, or in JavaScript, you don't necessarily need the var. However, just for uh, learning purposes, we're going to stick with var, and we're going to say name is equal to Caleb. Now this is what declaring a variable looks like. You have your declaration, you have your variable name is equal to just one equal sign. That's important and we'll talk about that in a later lesson. And then in here we have uh, apostrophes which could technically be replaced by quotation marks, same thing. And it ends in a semicolon. Now the semicolon in JavaScript is completely optional. You don't you don't need to have it there. But if you're going to write some clean code, it's a good idea to have it there. Um, there are some standards out there that prefer if you have it. Again, not really necessary. In the future, if you're going to be writing a programming language like uh, PHP, for example, every line in PHP has to end in a semicolon. So getting in the habit of writing a semicolon versus not writing the semicolon is a good idea. Now. If you choose to, to learn Python in the future, Python does not end in a semicolon. It just has a blank line. In fact, Python looks a lot like this. Now, this is not a Python course, but I'm just showing you, uh, or I'm demonstrating that there are different ways to do this. Moving forward in this class, we are always going to have a semicolon at the end of every line. I might miss a couple here or there, but JavaScript is uh, not strict enough to complain about that unless there's obviously a good reason to, uh, but I always try to put a semicolon at the end. Now, for this lesson, I'm actually going to do a little bit more inside of the browser itself so that you can see that you can actually write JavaScript inside of your browser. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call it index.html. Okay, so I have my index.html file, and all I did was add some basic HTML structure. We're not going to write JavaScript in here. I'm just going to go ahead and open this inside of Chrome, though. All right, so in Chrome, there's absolutely nothing fancy about this. All we're going to do is right click, go to inspect, and you can do this in pretty much any browser. And I'm just going to change this to be on the right. And in here, we have elements, console, sources, network, performance, memory, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What we want is console. And right in here, you can actually type your JavaScript right into the browser. So if we say variable name is equal to Caleb, and hit enter, it says undefined. In all honesty, it's lying to you. It's not undefined. So if we go ahead and type name, we get Caleb, right? This is a variable. That means that the variable name, N-A-M-E, has a value called Caleb. Now, if you remember back to your math days where uh, your teacher would say, find the value of X, and X would be 9 or 3.14, some number, right? Those are variables. Now, don't get discouraged. This is really as much math as we're going to be doing for quite a while. Uh, the math in JavaScript does not get very extensive unless you want to get into charts or animation libraries or anything like that. Uh, but for what we're doing, the math is, is super simple, so you don't have to be afraid of that at all. Now, there is a difference between different types of variables. For example, variable age I could say 27, right? Again, I hit enter, it says undefined, but if I type age, it says 27. But what happens if I type variable age two, right? It tries to autofill for me, you can see that. Age two is equal to, and I put it in quotations. If I put this in quotations, again, it says undefined, but if I say age two, the difference is that one, is just a number, an integer, and the other one has quotations around it. Now that is a pretty big difference, and this is the difference between a data type. Don't be concerned with memorizing all of this. We're going to get a lot more hands-on with this a little bit later, um, and for the time being, you really just need to know that there are different types 
of, of variables out there, different data types. So what we've experienced so far, name would be a string. Now anything with quotations around it or with apostrophes around it is called a string. If it doesn't have quotations, if it's a full number, it's called an integer. But what if we have variable pi is equal to 3.14 something something something, right? And we type pi again. Now this looks a lot like an integer, but technically it's not an integer. Well, I mean, it is, but because it has a decimal point in it, it's actually called a float. Now, a float is basically just a number that has a decimal point. And if you remember back to your, your math days, 3.0 is the exact same as 3. However, when we're talking about being the exact same in programming, 3.0 is not the exact same. Actually, let me type that different. It is not the exact same as 3. This one here, just 3, is an integer. And 3.0 is a float. Is that incredibly important at the time? No. Uh, and maybe throughout your JavaScript future as, as a JavaScript developer, it might never come up. However, uh, when we get into comparisons, how, how do we compare if three is equal to three or if something is true or false, right? Those types of comparisons, we're going to get into those. And all of a sudden, this is going to make a lot more sense. So just bear with me for the time being. It's important to know this now. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but it's very important to know. Now there's another one, ah, as you can see, actually, I, I hit enter just to make a new line and it says false. Uh, but if we did uh, three is equal to three, that's true. Again, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, there's another type of data out there, a uh, data type called null. Uh, so we could just say variable, we'll call it something. Uh, and actually it's not null. Uh, this has been defined. Um, but the value is undefined. And so we see this everywhere else. Uh, technically, this value name is not undefined, but something is undefined because we didn't write something is equal to something else, which that actually would have broke because there were no strings. Now, when we are declaring a variable as a string, we have variable string, we have to have quotations or quotes around it. It doesn't matter which one as long as they are the same. So you open with a, a quotation, something, you end with a quotation, type string, that's the variable name that we typed, that we declared, and we get the value. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this. Now what happens when we try to declare a string without quotations or apostrophes, right? We do variable something else, is equal to, and we can just write anything that would be a string, right? So it's not a number, it's not a float, uh, it's not an object or array, we'll get to those. It's supposed to be a string, like a sentence, but it doesn't have quotations around it. So we say, hello, my name is Caleb, and we get a syntax error, unexpected identifier, identifier and that's because something else thinks it's referencing another variable technically called hello and the space breaks the whole process. Now when it comes to declaring a variable, uh, there are lots of different ways you can do it. You can camel case, right? So camel casing is you start with a lowercase letter and every word after that put together into one long word has a capital camel casing. Or for example, hello, my name is Caleb. That's camel casing. I'm just going to make that bigger, actually. There's another way to, to name your variable variables, and you can use underscores. Hello, my name is Caleb. Now, you can't actually see that. There we go. Uh, I have underscores in there. Is equal to test. Now, why does this bring up the... The, the string when I defined it here, but in previous examples, it always it always said undefined. Well, the reason it was undefined was because we were using var, and var has a, a hoisting mechanism, um, and I think that's gonna be something we talk about in the future, uh, just because hoisting is sort of unique to JavaScript. 
but it, it, it's it's just one of those things that's good to know because eventually you're going to run into a problem where it's like, why is why is my anonymous function or why is my variable not being defined or or why is it being defined but it has nothing in it yet? And that, that's called hoisting. We'll get into that later. Don't worry about that. Going back to naming conventions, uh, you could name any variable, literally anything you want. I spelled that wrong. Anything you want. However, there are some exceptions. Do not write a variable, like don't start a variable name with a number. In most languages, that's not allowed, not to mention it's a bad practice. So don't say for something or 40 year old, right? That's, that's not good, don't do that. Uh, in JavaScript, you'll see a lot of variables that start with an underscore. Totally acceptable, that's fine. Also, do not use dashes, no dashes. So don't use dashes. Uh, and in fact, don't use any other punctuation either. It's unnecessary. So uh, don't use dashes is equal to, see, it gave us an error. Uncut syntax error, invalid or unexpected token. What it thinks right now is that this is being escaped. Again, a subject we'll talk about in the future, not important right now. Uh, and it also thinks that this is the variable, essentially. And it can't figure out what's going on after it or why there's a slash there, so it throws you an error. 